Now, for more on the global state of the Postal Service, we are joined by Rick Geddes. He is the founding director of Cornell University's program in infrastructure policy. Thank you, Rick, for joining us. Uh, we're seeing that in the UK, they're on the path to privatization when it comes to their postal service. Here in the US, the US Postal Service defaulted on its payments to the Treasury last year. What has really gone wrong here? Well, Karina, I think that uh, the US Postal Service is behind the curve uh, globally in terms of uh, reforming its uh, posts for the internet age and uh, modernizing the laws that govern the Postal Service. Keep in mind that all 27 members of the European Union have eliminated their postal monopolies, which has allowed those companies to be much more commercial, uh, much more entrepreneurial, and to really adjust uh, to the new communications marketplace. The U.S. postal reform is really quite far behind uh, most other countries in terms of adapting to the new uh, types of communications. Okay, well, even, I mean, speaking of reform, it's been a very uh, tough going because we saw that the postal master uh, tried to make changes where he would eliminate Saturday deliveries, but Congress uh, didn't approve that. So are we also getting pushback from Washington mm -hmm. when it comes to reforming the, the Postal Service? Yep, absolutely we are, Karina. That's really quite, quite unfortunate. Keep in mind the Postmaster General just wanted to eliminate letter delivery on Saturdays. He proposed continuing with uh, parcel and other service deliveries, but Congress said, uh, sorry, we, we won't allow you to do that. The Postal Service estimated that would have saved them about $2 billion a year uh, just by reducing uh, that, that one day of delivery. But this gets to a, a deeper issue, Karina, where we really need to free up the U.S. Postal Service from a lot of these political influences unless we really want to see that red ink uh, continue. Keep in mind the Postal Service in its 2012 fiscal year lost about $12.9 billion. It's done a little bit better in the 2013 year, the uh, first few quarters, but it still is, is losing money uh, because people are sending fewer letters. And uh, keep in mind that letters are really the profits. Historically, they've been the profit center uh, for the Postal Service. It doesn't make as much money off of, say, standard mail, which is what we think of as advertising mail. And it competes with FedEx, United Parcel, DHL, and others in the, the shipping of, uh, of parcels, which is often uh, what we think of as being linked to Internet purchases. So it's not clear that that's going to, to uh, make up for that lost uh, revenue. So really the Postal Service needs to become much more of a commercial entity forming uh, new partnerships with private businesses and really becoming much more of a uh, commercial type of an entity. Do you think it might follow the path of the UK and, and might privatize here in the US as well? What are the odds of that? Well, I think our, uh, the structure of the U.S. Postal Service is, is really quite far away from that at this point. At first, I think it should be commercialized, which means to free up the regulations that surround the Postal Service at the same time we reduce or eliminate its uh, monopoly power. I also think it needs to adopt more of a regular company structure with a board of directors instead of a board of governors, which is what it currently has, where the board of directors would be drawn from experts in uh, international global postal services and logistics that really know how to run a big company like this, free up the pay scales for senior management so that we can get in executives who really understand uh, how to run these types of businesses in a dynamic sector uh, like logistics and mail has become, and just make it more of a, a commercial-oriented uh, activity unless U.S. taxpayers want to start subsidizing it directly which I think they probably don't want right. to do at this stage. No, I doubt they do right now. Not, not the best climate for that. Uh, but now, uh, experts do say that nope. they could become a primary shipper for consumers shopping online. I mean, do you think that is a real possibility that could compete with some of the, the FedExes and the UPSs out there? Well, Karina, we have to keep in, in mind, if yes, they already are competing. They have their parcel post uh, businesses. United Parcel Service has it. Keep in mind that the Postal Service has partnered uh, uh, in, a, in a very major way with uh, Federal Express already, where Federal Express uses its extensive uh, fleet of cargo planes to carry mail overnight, uh, you know, in addition to their extremely urgent uh, packages. And on the other side, the United pa uh, U.S. Postal Service will carry FedEx packages to the doorstep. So there there's are big partnerships uh, going on like that already. Uh, in terms of it becoming the dominant provider for that, I'm not sure. We have to be careful because the U.S. Postal Service has a lot of government bestowed uh, benefits like the ability to borrow Correct. directly from the United States Treasury. 
uh, at $15 right. billion dollars, uh, maximum. So these are benefits that, that it could use to unfairly compete. Right, absolutely. But those partnerships are key to their success going forward. Thank you so much, Rick. That was Rick Geddes, founding director of Cornell University's program in infrastructure policy.